Welcome to week 24 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Now tomorrow is Father's Day, so in honor of that, we are going to be making Scott's favorite dessert, classic key lime pie. So check your oven, make sure there's nothing in there, set it to 325, grab your ingredients, and let's go bake. ever made a pie before you know the pie crust comes first now this is a classic key lime pie that means graham cracker crust you can make it that's what I'm going to do I'm also not gonna tell anyone if you buy a pre-made pie crust who cares if you don't have the time you don't have the time it's not that big a deal but for this pie crust now this is a little different I've only done um, graham cracker sugar, like granulated sugar and a little bit of salt. This calls for powdered sugar. So this is a new one for me. I haven't done this one before. Um, you're gonna need about 10 um, graham crackers and you're gonna crush them. I did these in my Ninja uh, blender. And then you are going to need six tablespoons of butter, melted. Actually, I'm gonna add that last. You are going to need a fourth of a cup of powdered sugar. And get that all in there. So it's going to be a nice sweet crust, which is nice. I, I can understand it because the key lime is particularly tart. Uh, I believe an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. Yeah, an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar or salt. Just a little teeny tiny bit. Now I'm going to mix all that up and then I'm going to add my six tablespoons of melted butter. Your pie plate needs to be a nine inch round pie plate. It has to be at least an inch and a fourth deep. Um, I have this old glass pie plate. It is Pyrex, it is vintage. I have two of them and I love them. And I was, it was a toss up because I also have this cobalt blue Pyrex, um, but it's a little fancy and I thought the green pie inside the blue was going to be actually it's not really green is it? It's kind of a yellow color So you're going to mix this up It's going to be kind of gooey and ooey And then we're going to press it into our pie pan You are going to want to press it all along the bottom evenly and then up the sides as even as you can get it because this is a graham cracker crust, you don't have to worry about crimping. So that's super nice. If you find some big, chunks, some big chunks in there, don't panic, just grab a fork and crush them up. It's not that big a deal, okay? So dump it in. Um, I think I'm only gonna dump a little bit of time here. If I need some more, then um, I'll add some more. And then you're gonna start pressing. Once you get this pressed on the bottom and the sides, it's going to go into your 325 degree oven for 15 minutes. Let me double check that. Um, yeah, 15 minutes. So once the 15 minutes is up, you're gonna take it out, put it on a rack, and forget about it until we're ready to put the filling in. So get to pressing. Start in the middle, work your way around. can turn your plate as you go. Pressing pretty hard here. You're gonna really need it to stick together. Try to keep it from coming up over the edge. And remember, you can go back in, if you have some left in your bowl, you can go back in and fill in those, those spots. Okay, let's talk about limes. It turns out there is a difference between key limes and just your run-of-the-mill limes. For starters, regular limes are bigger. This is the size of a key lime. These are itty bitty and my local store did not have them once I realized that there was a dis difference in the taste um, when we were in town, uh, like populated town with a Deerbergs and a Schnooks, we went ahead and got some there. Um, so we are going to zest two limes. Now it did not specify key limes, so I'm assuming it meant regular limes. I'm zesting four, because honestly I feel like two of these equals four. 
Maybe that's excessive, but Scott really likes lime. So I'm just gonna take a chance and go for it. Um, now I am using my, uh, is this Pampered Chef? I feel like this is, yeah, this is Pampered Chef. Um, you know, I'm kind of snobby with Pampered Chef stuff sometimes. I don't own a ton of it because it can be expensive, but I love this thing. Um, when we had the lemon tree, I was constantly doing lemon stuff. And so this neat little contraption has the bowl underneath. It has the microplane top and then it has the juicing top. So it does ask for key lime juice or lime juice, freshly squeezed if at all possible. Listen, there is a difference between freshly squeezed and in a bottle, but don't get crazy with it. If you can't find fresh limes, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Just do the best you can with what you have to work with, right? I was lucky I found key limes. I don't even want to know how much they cost. Um, I did not go in and buy them. Scott did. But yeah, so you are going to, while your crust is in there cooking, there we go. Let me get all this good stuff off of here. But you know, <laughs> zest is one of those things that really makes my brain icky because I'm like, oh my gosh, you're eating the outside of the fruit. Well, yeah. So we are going to put this in here. Um, I wish, I wish this tilted or like the bowl slid out so that you could put things in it easier, but it doesn't. So we are going to use our whisk. Okay. We're going to use our whisk attachment on the mixer. Oh, and if you don't want to get something like this microplane, it's, from Amazon, it's super inexpensive, and I use that one a lot. If I'm not gonna juice something, I'll usually just break out the little teeny tiny microplane. Okay, we are going to use our whisk attachment here. Love the whisk attachment, never get to use it all that much. Bowl up, three egg yolks. You are going to, where's my spatula? How come I can never find my spatula when I need it? Boy, I'm so well prepared today. Uh, green one will do. So three egg yolks and your lemons, lime zest. I'm gonna say lemon zest probably eight different times instead of lime, but just know that I mean lime, not lemon. Although I would imagine you could do this with lemon too and it would probably be pretty neat. All right, bowl is up. All right, what are we doing here? High speed for about four minutes. Um, basically, you're gonna want this to get kind of thick. It's gonna change color so it gets a little bit lighter. It's really, it's gonna end up looking like an unset custard. Okay, since the mixer is not getting it, I'm just gonna pull the bowl out and I'm gonna go after this with my hand whisk. You can use a hand mixer, doesn't matter. We just gotta get the job done. So about four minutes. Now the recipe did say that it's gonna look a lot like a hollandaise sauce. I don't know what that is. Um, obviously some kind of egg mixture. This is getting lighter. And it's definitely looking kind of custardy. It smells good. It smells very tropical, fruity. Four minutes of this. Whew, I thought I could hack it, but this is gonna be this is gonna be the workout, man. All right, come back in three minutes. Okay, um, while that was whisking, and it is a very light yellow color now and very thick, um, I've started juicing my limes, but we're going to add in your can of sweetened condensed milk. This is a 14 ounce can, which is two and a half, one and one fourth cups of sweetened condensed milk. And that's gonna go right in there. Um, 
don't actually understand what sweetened condensed milk is. Um, I just know that it looks like a sugar glaze. So, I mean, obviously it's milk. Trying to get all of it in there, which is never, ever going to happen. Okay, and then you are going to beat that at a high speed for three minutes. While that's beating, um, go ahead and get your limes juiced or get your juice ready. I don't know how many of these key limes it's going to take to get to two-thirds of a cup. All I know is that juicing these teeny tiny limes is really, really tricky. So I'll let you know how many I end up needing. Okay, now we're adding the two thirds, three, two thirds of a cup. This is way too much juice. Boy, I'm glad I noticed that. Let me just, <laughs> let me just work on this here. Is that right? All right, two thirds of a cup of lime juice and it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took about eight limes to get here. Um, and we're just stirring this to combine. Just giving it a little stir here. Nothing too high. You do want to make sure it's all incorporated. Um, this is where you would add the lime oil if you're using that. It's one eighth to one fourth teaspoon of lime oil. I'm not doing that. Uh, I didn't see the need to purchase lime oil when it's not something that I'm going to use more than once a year. So this is starting to thicken. It's very pretty. It looks like a, looks like a pudding with lime zest. And it smells very good too. So, all right, that's done. Okay, get your, hopefully your pie shell has cooled enough. We're going to get this put in. Okay, we are going to pour the mixture into the pie shell here. Trying to make sure I get it all out. And if you notice, I do have my pie plate on a cookie sheet. Um, sometimes things overflow in the oven. Anytime I make any kind of custard pie, they don't usually rise up. Um, but when I'm baking cakes, they go on, uh, the cake pans go on a cookie sheet. Um, also, pie plates are hard for me to to grasp sometimes if I'm having a, a painful hand day. Cookie sheets are just easier to get in and out of the oven. Um, I haven't noticed that it really affects the baking one way or the other, so that's what I do. All right, I'm just kind of smoothing the top out here, making it look all pretty. Okay, this is gonna go into the oven for 25 minutes, all right? The edges are going to appear set. It's still going to be wobbly in the middle. You're gonna need a thermometer for this. The middle of your pie should be reading 145 degrees. That is when it is safe to bring it out. You're gonna cool it on a rack completely, okay? You're gonna want this thing totally cool. All right, into the oven, good luck. When your timer goes off, and your pie is reading 140 degrees in the center, you're gonna leave it on a rack to cool to room temperature. Once it hits room temperature, which could take an hour, maybe a little longer, you're going to put it into the refrigerator. Now you're going to need to refrigerate that for several hours, okay? Once it's been in the refrigerator for a few hours, you can pull it out, you can make it pretty with whipped cream, lime slices, lime curls, things like that. Um, you can make your whipped cream, you can use store-bought whipped cream, it doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. You don't have to dress it up at all. You can just slice it and serve it as is. So, you know, figure out kind of what you wanna do. You've got a couple hours to make that decision and I will see you back 
when it's time to taste this thing. It's pie time. <laughs> pie time. It's high time for pie time. I don't know. I'm not making any sense. Um, but this has been in the fridge. I have removed it from the fridge. I put little slices of lime and some whipped cream on it. And now it is time to give this a try. It smells really good. Um, and I will, I will be the first one to admit, key lime is not exactly my thing. Um, so I'm not anticipating falling in love with this, but hopefully Scott will think it tastes good. And that's all that matters. All right. I'm also terrible at slicing and serving pie. So I thought about doing this in like a tart pan. Um, it's holding together. That's always a good sign when you have a pie is that it holds together. Okay, it looks really good on the inside. Listen, if you're, it's essentially a custard pie, right? With the eggs. If your if the inside of your pie is runny, it's not done and you should not eat it. It's not safe to eat. Remember that core temperature needed to get up to 145 degrees. So, okay. <laughs> Ooh. It is wow, that is very strong. Um that is really, <laughs> really strong, but it's good. Mm -hmm. The crust is really sweet and crunchy. I kind of wish I'd made my crust a little bit thicker because I think that sweetness would have uh, counteracted the tartness from the limes a little bit better for me but I think Scott's gonna like this. So um, yeah, this is a good pie. <laughs> I did not expect to like it this much. Well, that's it for week number 24 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. This key lime pie was definitely a winner, especially if you love tart, citrusy type of desserts. I can see that I will probably be making this again. And I hope that you baked along. Uh, if you did and you enjoyed it, leave me a comment. Tell me what went good, what went bad, what you liked, what you didn't. And hit the subscribe button because I'm going to bring you a brand new to me recipe every single Saturday morning between 7 and 9 a.m. You should also hop on over to the Facebook page because I put out the ingredient list for what we're going to bake. I do that on Wednesday mornings. That way you have plenty of time to get your shopping done. So I hope that you tune in next week when we make something a little sweeter than this and something that I know I'm going to absolutely love if I can do it correctly. Uh, so I will see you then.